Arknights has a lot of factions. There's a decently long wiki page sorting operators by their faction, but what is each faction about? What makes them unique? That's what this video is about. Now I'll be going geographically A to Z covering factions within nations whenever their nation comes up. To start off with? You know Rapture from Bioshock? Yeah, it's pretty much that. Fish society that by this point has been ruined. Although in the case of Arknights it was because they used the Orange Stone to awaken Kyogre, whereas in Bioshock it was the most terrifying enemy humans have ever faced. Politics. They also have really crazy technology and think they're God's gift to the world, and get destroyed because of it, so a little bit of that Atlantis action too. That random Pokemon reference was made for a reason, as what Ager was essentially being destroyed by is a huge funny looking fish guy in his army. Now what do the Abyssal Hunters have to do with that? Well these schmucks were supposed to cut through him in his DISGUSTING SEABORN MINIONS like a late game Sivir. However, they almost all got massacred and instead of fully dying he somehow survived inside the one who killed him? Yeah, not all of this makes sense. They're also juicing with seaborne blood to hit some crazy PBs at the gym. Babel is gone. Teresa dies. Cults it doesn't love you, and W is a shit character. Moving on. Come one, come all to one of the finest civil wars you'll ever find. In one corner, representing the Lithanian government as its puppet state, the Singhas Dynasty. In another corner, representing Colombian interests, the coalition government. And finally, the populace representing the nationalists of Bolivar, the true Bolivarians. Let's get ready to rumble! Imagine Las Vegas with its what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, devil may care ethos, but now throw it into Afghanistan. What do you get? In a war-torn nation, people are desperate for anything peaceful, even if that includes saving for years to vacation for a week and then die. And that's essentially how this evil-ass bitch runs this city that looks like a paradise, but whose only consistent industries are gambling, drinking, and weapons dealing. Welcome to Colombia, land of the free, home of the brave, where we shop at Floor Mart and Mama John's, export a pop culture, treat the infected like people, poor people, but people nonetheless, engage in immoral science in the name of progress, and utilize the CIA to destabilize neighboring countries. In the cities, we got some serious underground syndicates, security companies, and previously mentioned labs you can join up with. All in all, whether you're working on a railroad, private security, or professional athletics, may not be perfect, but at least we're in the upper half of pretty much everything. The world's premier PMC, built from brave patriots who cast off the shackles of those dirty Victorian lobster backs. Want transports protected? Need a country destabilized? Need someone absolutely dead? We're your guys. Now hiring infected, as long as you can adhere to the five major rules as listed in the company manual, pages 46 through 50. Do you want to work on the very cutting edge of robotics or Arginium and biology? Are you tired of those half-rate pussies at the universities telling you dumb shit like, Just because we can, doesn't mean we should. Can money really shove down that ethical side of you that says things like, No, I'm a scare little baby. I don't like ripping the brains out of orphans. If so, Ride Lab is a job for you. Do ecological research with a baddie, energy research with a baddie, or Arginium research with our baddest baddie. Or maybe you're more brawn than brains. In that case, you can join the defense team. With a baddie? No, you fucking idiot. She's not bad, she's dad. The Far East, a tributary state to the larger Yan, enjoying a period of civil war between samurai clans similar to Japan in our world, and also similarly to our world, their cultural exports have created a large population of neckbeards obsessed with a fictionalized version of the country. Wow, this is just like one of my Higashian animes, the immersion. Bro, go immerse yourself in a shower. Welcome to Iberia, home of La Siesta, Corrida de Toros, Flamenco, and the Inquisition. 
During our golden age, we traveled long and hard, discovering, charting, trading, conquering, colonizing. Back before the profound silence took everything away. The seaborne and the sea terrors come for us constantly. My dairy business has been destroyed. They take my cows and oceanize them. But I have a new plan. I will create a hard dairy drink. You've heard of hard seltzer. Now prepare for louder milk. Inquisition, get on the ground. I hear you're not only drinking alcohol, but far, far worse. You've been treating Aegerians like people! But sir, have you seen some of the women? I've heard enough! You'll be going away for a long time. Some sinners just can't be saved. <coughs> Welcome to Terra's premier wasteland shithole. Castle has had less consistent success than the Detroit Lions, which is really saying something. However, the winds may be changing, as with spoiler alert. Chapter 10. We get the formerly independent Sarkaz mercenaries of Kazdel coming together within the walls of Londinium. More on that later. But with Teresa leading and Teresa somehow being alive, the future looks brighter than ever. Well, that is if your definition of a brighter future is a world so barren it makes a Russian winter look vibrant and full of life. The Sarkaz have been and continue to be mostly made up of warmongers, and if you're not a Sarkaz, well, well, just like how Lot Toronto views themselves, if you're not like them, you're an enemy. Ah, Kashmir's home of night sports. Old legends of heroic noble families overcoming the odds and beautiful corporate urban sprawl. As you may expect from those three adjectives of the horse pussy homeland, the big cities are a sight to behold in a world that mostly struggles to get by. But as old noble houses slowly lose more power, some things don't change. Life for the infected sucks and slavery even still exists here. Kashmir's hides all that baggage away though, and try to outperform the rest of the world economically, mainly Colombia, as stated at the end of the Near Light event. Wait a minute. We all know what old noble families do. Slavery still exists. This is hidden behind a facade of honor and desperate to outproduce the equivalent of the Union. Cletus, get the banjos! We found our faction! <coughs> Corporately paid for assassin group. That's about it, really. Penis Sylvest Tits is the infected nightclub that the Flametail Knight Sona started. It's the most relevant nightclub to the story, but outside of these four, similarly to the Armless Union, there isn't much else to say about them. Welcome to Kerag! I'm here standing on Mount Jungfrau without approval from the Power Oceans! Kerag may be a small country, but like a short stack, it's got a ton of depth despite its tiny size! It's mainly ruled by three clans! The Palaroches, Brown Tails, and the Silver Ashes. The god of the nation is an extra creepy ghost looking ass woman with the guidance of the current head of the Silver Ash family. Kurag is finally beginning to industrialize. Oh, oh god, a blizzard's coming! Welcome to the most beautiful civilization you'll find. As long as you look and act just like us. I already made a video about Lanzarano, go watch that. <laughs> so with that being said, all you need to know is Sancta best, other races mid, Sarkas bad. Welcome to Lithanian, both the hub of culture with art, music, and high fashion, as well as the hub for arts development, which was done through vicious experimentation by the previous ruler, the Witch King. No, not that Witch King, this Witch King. Notoriously brutal towards the infected, outside of bus and beats by base boosted betas, Lithanians will do Fortnite dances outside of poor infected ghettos to make fun of them. A powerful nation with perhaps more notable NPCs than operators, such as the Candlestick Knight Viviana Drosta from Near Light, and a bunch more that I don't care about. Except Beagler, he was, he was pretty cool. If you're looking to be a part of truly refined culture, and don't mind the culture itself, or the leadership possibly killing you, or using you as experiments at any moment, it's not bad! <coughs> Welcome to Hong Kong! No, oh, that's not right. Heart Woman? Oh, not that either. Ah, there it is, Lungman. Combining the bright lights of the Grand Knight territory, cultural exchange of Colombia, and base culture of Yen, Lungman's a weird place. While unique in some ways, it's pretty normal in others. Far more free than Yen, yet having a very similar infected policy. This was the place where Kshay nabbed Tallulah, creating Arknight's most lame and unsatisfying boss, but that's really neither here nor there. The income equality may be as close as New York City is to Jakarta, 
Buddy, you can still have a good time. Furry Phoenix Right Squad. Police with Hot Rich Girl Boss. Psychopaths with Cool Penguin Boss. Minos is a group of nomadic cities close to both Sargon and Columbia. And you know what big countries do to littler neighbors? Raid them for all their valuables and pass around their resources like a barely conscious white girl in a locker room. Minos, with the help of 12 heroes, would eventually throw back the Sargonian invaders. And like all Greek people in real life, they never shut up about their culture from ages ago. Why yes, Davidios! I'm aware Roman gods were based mostly on Greek ones. You've only told me 478 times this week. Minoan culture is heavily built on hero worship. And because of that, you're pretty well off as an affected. After all, cults need members in order to function. This at least works if you're not in a position of power. As a priest or a priestess would be unceremoniously dumped from their post, like I dumped the five bodies of people I killed in Eastern Leipzig in 2019. You'll never catch me or find the bodies. Onward, brothers! For the infected! Wait, is, is that a squirt gun? <laughs> Ah, Rhodes Island, home of the doctor, home of the daughter, home of the bitch. We're a pharmaceutical company most well known for our treatment of the infected and our paramilitary wing, which is where you, the doctor, come in. We go here, we go there, we even go here, killing everywhere along the way. Saving people, <laughs> nah, sorry buddy, we got amnesia and don't remember how. But how to take tactical command over a field of battle with ultra-specific powers and abilities? Now that is what we're here for. Rhodes is a generally good reputation, and if you had to choose somewhere to end up in the world of Ark Knights, it wouldn't be so bad. Enjoy life as the Doctor amongst people from tons of nations, all while slowly gaining back memories of your unhinged murder sprees. Good eye, mate. Welcome to Rim Billiton. We're one huge fucking mining company in the middle of nowhere. Be prepared to mine in the morning, mine in the afternoon, mine in the evening, and mine in your dreams. Get infected? No big deal. You weren't gonna do anything other than mine anyway. Foreign merchants are constantly trying to influence the population, and you can't trust anything you see in the media. Just imagine if Fox News and CNN partnered with Jeff Bezos to run a country. Yikes. Sami's culture reads like a Bad Bear Grylls parody. Everything they do is based on this is how the ancient natives also did this thing. While they're finally being introduced to modern technology by Columbia, leading to an Arknights version of the Columbian Exchange from our world, let's just hope they don't take any blankets. In the heart of Sami on the ice fields, eldritch horrors populate the land. Nothing says the Arctic life like ice fishing for a shadow blocks of the sun and as you turn, you see the 93 eyeballs of the monster who's about to eat you cock first, all open at once. Welcome to the ice fields, motherfucker! With both deserts and jungles, Sargon's massive land should be pretty powerful. However, they seem to be falling on hard times politically. In the deserts, there's more petty infighting and bickering than a Mean Girls movie. They would rather burn through all their money and men fighting over the land equivalent of a $10 Dunham's gift card than threaten the rest of the world after the Minoan Incident. Meanwhile in the jungle, crocs and snakes party, fight, fuck, and despite limited interactions with the rest of the world, are happy with the way things are. And hey, if that's how they feel, then shine on, you huge green stupid diamonds. What if you wanted to go on vacation to Dos Soles, but for the beaches and sunshine, and not the gambling, drugs, violence, and immense corruption? I'd call you unadventurous, but to each their own. Siesta is the PG water down Dos Soles, where they're led by some pretty chill people, instead of a maniacal sociopathic butt baby. There's a music festival where you can see God's Gift to Man perform live, plenty of places to chill, do tourist shit, and overall, have a nice ass time. It's a me, Boppy Boopy, Pizza Mafia, capiche? Parts of Italy being run by the Mafia has been known about for a long time, but an organized they just cut out the middleman, and gave the whole place over to the mob. It's essentially run by three families. The Bolognese, Rosati, Salusos, the Fettuccini, the Ferrari! I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop. They're supposed to be brought together under one central figure, but there is dissonance within the nation. Honestly, without the event being out yet globally, just go watch JoJo Season 5. Maybe the only time Giorno will be a better main character than someone. Welcome to the largest empire in all the land, Ursus. Offensively bad accent aside, Ursus is Russia. It's cold, 
It's poor. It's backwards. Infamous for being incredibly xenophobic and militaristic. <laughs> as well as straight up organizing kill squads to eliminate or force into war camps anyone who happens to be infected or speak out against the government. About a thousand years ago, the Ivanovich dynasty took control of the country. Now has it always been them? How many heirs have been married in? How inbred are they? How many have been thrown into the air pit? We don't know, but what we do know is that they participated in the War of the Four Emperors to do what England in our world only dreams they could. Annihilate France. Ursus have been fighting everyone. Kashmir's, Yan, Higashi, themselves. They continue to have some crazy domestic tension as everyone is at everyone else's throat. <coughs> Group of sad bears who can bond over their shared passion for peeling off the skin of their peers and consuming them. <coughs> Victoria is whack. Despite their favorable position in the center of Terra, their banks have never been emptier. Their founding as a nation and subsequent subjugation of Tara was a backstab on the nation's very founders and their soft power of literature and technology is quickly being beaten back by Kashmir's and Columbia who do it better. To top all that off are the events in Chapter 10. There is no way any nation would, even if their mercenaries allow a massive historically hostile foreign force to just march in their biggest city and take it over. That's ridiculous. There are supposedly squabbling nobles who allowed this to happen, but it seems like the Sarkaz are acting completely independently, which makes even less sense considering Londinium is clearly an important trade and port city, meaning the Sarkaz just have free reign to do whatever they want in the Londinium trade order to keep all the Ducats for themselves. This upsets me. Oh, should Jesus me, Seamus! The Victorians know we're here! We got to get to the Guinness and the Cairn and get down to here! Forgive me, couldn't resist one final horrible accent. Dublin is a weird mix of a royalist uprising and our world's Irish. Terrans are Irish equivalents, and as you would expect, they don't get along too well with the British equivalent, Victorians. Their culture and language being stomped out didn't sit too well with them, and their leader claims to be a direct descendant of the kings of the past. What was their family name? Dublin? Oh, that's why they call it that. They end up working with the Sarkaz invading Londinium in the name of Kazdel thanks to their shared hatred of Victoria. But like a man following a rainbow hunting for a pot of gold. It looks like from what we've seen in chapters 9 and 10, they're heading towards disappointment, as they're an enemy faction in an anime game. With us slowly collecting former Dublin members, I imagine Reed will confront her sister with Horn, Mandragora, Harmony, and Bagpipe and say something like, Before, I didn't think I could stop you, but now that I have my friends, I can do anything! Then they unleash a friendship cannon and blow Oblana's head off. <coughs> Welcome to Yan, where we have a vibrant culture of art, dance, poetry, martial arts, cooking, smithing, literature, and cinema. Oh, and absolutely nothing happened in 1089. No college students were executed while making pro-democracy and pro swiss speeches. Yan is a peaceful nation that would never attack anyone. Oh yeah, Lungman is ours, and Agashi is ours, most of seen land is ours. We have an ancient map that says the ocean is ours, so you know. Oh, and uh, Kazdal's land is ours, Rimbilitan too. But we're a peaceful nation who would never dream of fighting anyone. We're militarizing and trying to revive ancient wrathful gods for peace. They're not buying it. Oh, fuck, uh, look, ooh, pretty mountains, ooh, women, ooh, you, you like that, right? Okay, nice, they're back in. See, that's what I've been telling you, you just blind them with breasts, it's easy. Now, we may be a peaceful nation, but we're super strong. And we have the best culture. And if you're not us, then you're stupid. We like to talk ourselves up. And it's totally not at all like Andrew Tate, where we big ourselves up, tied our crippling insecurities and weaknesses. Thanks for watching. This was a bitch to edit. But it's done. It's finished. I hope you enjoyed. Consider subscribing if you did. But... It'll probably be a little while before I upload again. It's a busy time of the old year, and, well, these take a surprisingly long amount of time. Especially if they're this long.